In this video, we will dive into strategies that you can use starting today to manage side effects from oral minoxidil. For a quick refresher, oral minoxidil was originally developed as a blood pressure lowering medication and at doses as high as 40 milligrams per day. But one of the side effects happened to be hypertrichosis, also known as new hair growth, often unwanted on the limbs, the chest, the back, the face, even the scalp. This led researchers to reformulate the drug as a topical and then test it on men and women with pattern hair loss. Today, topical minoxidil is FDA approved for over-the-counter use for both men and women at 5% and 2% solutions respectively. Unfortunately, topical minoxidil, when it comes to regrowing hair, it's just not that effective for most people. Studies show that up to 40 to 60% of topical minoxidil users, they don't even see an improvement to their hair. And other studies have found that up to 95% of topical minoxidil users, they'll quit within one year of starting, and two thirds of the people who quit will cite no effect as their rationale. Why is that? Why is it that oral minoxidil leads to hypertrichosis, whereas topical minoxidil, it barely does anything at all for half of its user base, maybe even more people? The answer probably has to do with two factors. The first factor is that only a fraction of the topical minoxidil that we apply ever even penetrates the outermost layer of our scalp skin, the stratum corneum, and even reaches the hair follicles in the first place. So there's a penetration issue with topical minoxidil. The second issue is that the delivery of topical minoxidil, it actually changes the way that the drug gets metabolized by our bodies. To dive into that a little bit more, Topical minoxidil is applied to the scalp as what's called a pro-drug. In other words, it's delivered inactively. In fact, topical minoxidil has to come into contact with an enzyme in the skin called sulfotransferase. And that enzyme is what activates minoxidil. It's what sulfates minoxidil, turns it into its active form, and then allows it to bind to hair follicle sites deeper in the skin after it penetrates into deeper skin layers so that it can actually have an effect and change the behavior of those hairs, hopefully leading to better hair growth. Unfortunately, recent research has shown that up to 40, maybe 60% of people, they don't even have enough levels of that skin enzyme, sulfotransferase, to activate enough minoxidil for the drug to even work in our scalps. This is why some investigators, they actually advocate for combining topical minoxidil with things that would enhance the activity of those enzymes when applied topically. We're talking adjuvant ingredients like retinoic acid or even separate therapies like microneedling. Not only do both of those things increase the absorption of minoxidil, but they also activate more sulfotransferase, giving topical minoxidil an amplified effect. And according to some studies, they increase the regrowth potential of topical minoxidil by maybe two or three fold, perhaps even higher. Now let's go back to oral minoxidil. Oral minoxidil doesn't suffer from the same problem. When oral minoxidil is swallowed, it's metabolized and processed in the liver where there's actually an abundance of sulfotransferase activity, at least for most people. This then turns nearly all of that minoxidil into minoxidil sulfate, and it sends it straight into the bloodstream. And then that minoxidil, which has been activated already, gets distributed all throughout other tissues in the body, like the skin. And that's why studies show such higher response rates for oral minoxidil and even better regrowth rates. I mean, pound for pound, it's just a very impressive drug when taken orally. And it also doesn't seem to work predominantly through androgen inhibition, but rather through effects on potassium ion channels, improvements to blood circulation, even modifications to inflammatory substances like prostaglandins. And for these reasons, a lot of men and women are just more willing to try minoxidil in the first place because it, it doesn't affect male hormones in the blood, in other parts of the body. And so it's not linked to the same magnitude of sexual or cognitive side effects as drugs like finasteride. And in that regard, over the last decade, researchers have actually turned back their attention to oral minoxidil, but this time for hair growth, and at this time at much lower doses than those 40 milligram daily tablets that used to be prescribed for antihypertension. We're talking doses as low as 0.25 milligrams daily, all the way up to five milligrams daily for treating pattern hair loss, at least as an 
off-label treatment. And so far, the safety and efficacy data on this low-dose oral minoxidil, it seems encouraging. Why isn't everybody with pattern hair loss using it? Well, as is the case with virtually all drugs, there are still side effects. Low-dose oral minoxidil might be relatively safe for the overwhelming majority of people, but it can still cause a mild decrease in blood pressure. So if you've got low blood pressure going into the drug, that might be a problem for you. In men and women, it also might make somebody feel like their heart is fluttering. And in women especially, it can sometimes lead to a bit of ankle swelling, also known as ankle edema. They don't like that, and I don't blame them. And for both men and women, it can also cause hypertrichosis, which for many females is not something that they are thrilled to experience. And finally, depending on the dose that you're actually trying of oral minoxidil, some patients experience electrocardiogram changes. That's alterations in the way that our heart beats. And some people even experience something called tachycardia, or resting heart rates above 100 beats per minute. That's not necessarily safe or healthy. So suffice it to say that oral minoxidil, it's just, it's not the right drug for everybody. But with the right strategy, we can manage many of these side effects, and in some cases, we can even eliminate them. The rest of this video focuses on ways that we can actually do this. And as always, the information that we are providing here and throughout the rest of the site, it's not medical advice, it's for educational purposes only. So if you are getting side effects or if you are interested in oral minoxidil, speak to your doctor so that you can understand the full breadth of risks. For side effects related to lightheadedness, blood pressure changes, limb swelling, water retention, and maybe milder, and I mean very milder cases of heart fluttering or electrocardiogram changes, maybe stop the medication or consider the following recommendations. Option number one, titrate your dose. For hair loss, women are often prescribed up to about 1.25 milligrams of oral minoxidil each day. Men are prescribed a little bit higher, one to five milligrams daily. Studies show that the response rates to oral minoxidil increases alongside higher doses. And the amount of hair growth that you can get increases alongside higher doses. And if you don't believe me, just look at these 25 pound children who were accidentally given prescriptions of oral minoxidil rather than a flu medication, and who later developed werewolf syndrome after a couple of weeks of dosing with it. But again, as the doses increase, so does the regrowth, so does the magnitude and the types of side effects you can experience. So given that oral minoxidil doses as low as 0.25 milligrams daily can still improve pattern hair loss outcomes, if you are experiencing side effects, consider cutting your dose in half. If you're at two and a half milligrams, go to 1.25 milligrams daily. If you're at 1.25 milligrams, go to 0.625 milligrams daily. Despite dropping the dose, you can still retain the benefits of the drug while dramatically lowering, potentially, whatever side effect that you are experiencing. And this can be done as simply as using a pill cutter to half your pills. That's option number one. Option number two, split your total daily doses. Take half in the morning, half in the evening. And again, a pill cutter can help here. Since oral minoxidil has a three hour half-life, taking your full daily dose in one single sitting can elevate your serum concentrations of activated minoxidil high enough to cause some unwanted side effects. This can be problematic. And it can also be something that can be mitigated by splitting your dose of oral minoxidil in half and moving from once daily use to twice daily mornings and evenings being an example here. So you can still have the same total daily drug exposure and thereby the same level of hair related benefits. But splitting the doses allows you to reduce the peak serum or blood concentrations of minoxidil at any given hour and thereby potentiate a reduction in side effects. That's option number two. Option number three try sublingual minoxidil. In a 2021 study, researchers tested a unique delivery method for oral minoxidil. Rather than having people just swallow the pills, the investigators actually asked participants to hold the oral minoxidil underneath their tongue and simply let the medication dissolve over a number of minutes. And they tested this at daily doses ranging from 0.45 milligrams 
all the way up to 4.05 milligrams. This type of delivery method is known as sublingual delivery, and it actually confers some unique advantages that oral minoxidil might not actually possess. Specifically, it allows the drug to bypass first pass metabolism. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, but that's basically when the drug gets activated in the liver and then redistributed in its active form everywhere throughout the body. So whereas oral minoxidil, when you swallow it, interacts with that sulfotransferase enzyme in the liver, it activates and then it travels through the bloodstream as its active form and binds and influences many tissues that it comes into contact with, like the heart, sublingual minoxidil doesn't necessarily do this. It actually enters the bloodstream in its inactive form. It hasn't been activated. It hasn't come into contact with that sulfotransferase enzyme yet. In fact, it only activates when it comes into contact with tissues that produce sulfotransferase enzymatic activity, like the scalp skin. And even though researchers have suggested that low levels of sulfotransferase activity might occur in 40 to 60% of people with pattern hair loss, at least at the scalp, sublingual minoxidil would still allow for nearly 100% absorption of minoxidil. So it still addresses that first problem with topical minoxidil, which is actually just that the drug doesn't really penetrate into the skin deep enough to produce an effect. And so the reasoning here is that with less processing of that drug through the liver, perhaps side effects like dizziness or low blood pressure, maybe those will also decrease, but not at the expense of hair regrowth. And in this sublingual study, that is exactly what researchers demonstrated. Sublingual minoxidil not only improved hair parameters in a dose-dependent manner, but in addition to that, it also had no effect on patients' blood pressure, and it led to just 10% of the peak serum concentrations that would be expected for active minoxidil versus its typical oral counterpart. So for people worried about side effects from oral minoxidil, sublingual delivery vehicles, they might actually be a great alternative. And in that regard, we've had a lot of members who have experimented with this, gotten side effects from oral minoxidil, titrated the dose, split their dosing up, no resolution, but sublingual was what actually worked for them. So consider it. If you try these things, and none of those work out, there is a fourth option. Just switch back to topical minoxidil. It can still work and it does work for a lot of people. And if you happen to be tolerating a 2% or a 5% formulation decently well, consider adding in minoxidil enhancers, retinoic acid, microneedling. These things can better enhance topical minoxidil's absorption, and its activation. And in doing so, they really might improve your hair growth outcomes. And if you happen to be tolerating those combinations well, also consider upping the dose of your topical. Go for a formulation that maybe has 7% minoxidil or 10% or even 15%. There are plenty of companies that sell or offer these. So for mild side effects, my opinion is that those are your four options. But what about the case where women are using oral minoxidil and they're dealing with unwanted hypertrichosis, that hair growth on their limbs, face, other places where they're just not happy to see new growth? Is there anything that they can do to mitigate those side effects but also retain the benefits of oral minoxidil? Well, the answer is actually yes. A small number of clinical studies have actually shown that pairing low-dose oral minoxidil with oral antiandrogens, specifically spironolactone, or bicalutamide, those things seem to further enhance the hair growth promoting effects of minoxidil in the scalp, but they diminish or even ablate unwanted hair growth elsewhere throughout the body, the limbs, the chest, the face. So if you are a female and you're in this situation, adding in 25 milligrams daily of spironolactone or maybe even 10 milligrams daily of bicalutamide, that could be a potential solution for you. For more information, check out our spironolactone and bicalutamide guides. All right, that's it. I hope this video helps. See you next time.